Hey guys! Welcome to TF2 101, the show where I cover basics for beginners. Today we're talking about the queen of the burn ward herself, the Pyro. She's got a lot of tricks up her sleeve, so let's jump straight into it. Pyro's flamethrower is very good at lighting multiple enemies on fire simultaneously. The flames pass through enemies and teammates alike, so it can be tempting to spray fire in every direction to set the maximum number of people ablaze. Try not to do this. The flamethrower does more damage the longer you keep attacking a single target, so focusing your fire stream on one person will be much more efficient to net kills. Attacking with your flamethrower will also inflict afterburn on enemies, causing them to take damage periodically for a short time. Afterburn shares the same properties as your primary damage, it only lasts Three seconds to begin with, but the longer you attack one target, the more time he's going to be on fire, up to 10 seconds at maximum. That being said, if you encounter a large group of people who are close to each other, you can easily just point your flamethrower towards the center of the group and damage everyone at once. Enclosed rooms and choke points are where Pyro shines, so try to stick to your home turf as much as possible. Pyro does a lot of damage extremely quickly, but she really struggles at long range and in open spaces, so don't run out into the open unless you're really confident you won't get shredded. The Air Blast is one of Pyro's foundational abilities, and it's strange to imagine that she didn't have it when the game launched. It just fits so naturally. If you right-click, you expend 20 ammo and unleash a burst of compressed air from your flamethrower. This blast pushes back enemies, extinguishes burning teammates, and deflects all projectiles within its range. Reflected projectiles gain a 35% damage boost and cannot harm your teammates. When you reflect a rocket, it essentially becomes your rocket, so you don't have to worry about hurting your friends. Air Blast has many, many different uses, so I'm going to go over them one by one. The Air Blast affects everything that isn't a bullet. Rockets, grenades, arrows, cleavers, short circuit balls, gerati, milk, anything that is currently in flight can be sent back at the enemy team from whence it came, with one notable exception. The air blast turns enemy projectiles into friendly ones, except for sticky bombs. You can push sticky bombs around, but they will remain the enemy demo man's sticky bombs, to be detonated at his discretion, so watch out. While it's useful for self-defense, I enjoy using air blast to nullify enemy spam directed at my teammates. Look at these soldiers, they can't do anything. Sure, I'm not hit anything, but neither are they. You don't actually have to hit people with the deflected rockets. Air blasting them anywhere prevents them from damaging you or your team, which is an absolute win. It's good offensively too. Hey soldier, nice buff banner you got there. Gotcha, bitch. Air Blast can put out teammates that are suffering from afterburn. Doing so gives you points and grants 20 HP, so it's worth doing pretty much every time. Keeping your team alive is good, especially since they will likely appreciate the extinguish with the sandwich later on. Air Blast can push enemies around. This is good for preventing enemies from advancing, getting a troublesome opponent away from you when you're losing a fight, pushing enemies into dangerous positions or off of cliffs, and most of all, uber denial. Yeah, the Air Blast works on ubered players. Pyro is fully able to entirely shut down uber charges by repeatedly pushing the invincible pair away from their objective, and can even separate the medic from his heal target and end the uber charge early. A trick I've picked up is that air blasting the enemy's feet will send them straight upward for whatever reason. I call this boot tech, since there isn't a name for it and that makes it sound technical and cool. The reason you might want to do this is that in TF2 you actually suffer greater knockback while airborne, so boot teching an enemy into the sky can set him up for another air blast that sends him much further away, or follow up with your secondary weapon. Boot teching is especially useful against spies since you don't want to push the spy towards your teammates. And speaking of spy... Good lord, you fight like a woman! Pyro is the spy's natural counter. Her flames can pass through teammates and fill entire areas, making her an ideal class to sweep for infiltrators. Your flamethrower will light spies on fire even if invisible or disguised, so periodically puffing teammates or sweeping around important targets is highly effective in catching the sneaky boy. Some would even say that catching the spy is the pyro's main job. I disagree since there's so much more pyro can do, but it certainly is a huge part of playing her. Catch him, roast him, and if he's about to stab a teammate, use air blast to get him away from said teammate. Pyro is a close quarters class. She can't stand in sniper sight lines and her damage is massively outpaced by Heavy, her main counter. While it's not impossible to kill an enemy Heavy, he generally has to be distracted or wounded first. In a straight fight, Pyro will not win against a Heavy. Aside from range, understand that the flamethrower is sustained damage and most weapons in TF2 deal burst damage. A shotgun will kill you faster than the flamethrower, so don't just rush into every fight expecting a triple kill. 
Sentries, sticky traps, revved up heavies, and scouts can all cause you huge headaches if you play too aggressively. Despite Pyro being a combat class, she's quite vulnerable to a lot of things and always needs a line of retreat open. Building that sense of when to back out of a fight is really important for Pyro, as well as a sense of when to go in. Rushing forward at the right time can cause team wipes, especially if you have a medic backing you up. Pyro is an opportunist. Wait for your moment, play carefully, and then strike while the iron is red hot. Ambushing is incredibly strong on Pyro. The flamethrower is so disorienting to fight against that jumping an unprepared enemy gives you a huge advantage. Hiding around corners and in small rooms can net you 4 or 5 kills in a row if the enemy trickles in one by one. In fact, even if you are the one caught off guard, the nature of the flamethrower means you still have an advantage. Turning a corner and meeting a Pyro is the last thing people expect, and those surprise attacks are one of Pyro's strongest strategies. Look. A lot of pyro mains swear by the flare. Whether they use the jumpy one, the spammy one, or the good one, you will hear no end of advice about how to execute combos, which flare guns are good for which situation, yada yada yada. But the thing to keep in mind is that flare guns are side grades. They are stronger in some situations and weaker in most, and should not be equipped every single match. What can be equipped every single match is the shotgun. This thing is a beast when it comes to Pyro, giving her the burst damage to finish off weakened foes, fight enemies just outside of flamethrower range, and just give you more options. If an experienced soldier player notices you reflecting all his rockets, he will swap to the shotgun and shoot you from outside your flamethrower range. Without a shotgun to return fire, you put yourself at a serious disadvantage. Pyro v Pyro fights are usually pretty derpy, involving a ton of awkward circle strafing and mouse wiggling, but two clean shotgun blasts will kill a Pyro much faster than using the flamethrower. Beyond these specific situations, situations, combining a quick stream of flames with burst damage from your shotgun can put down all but the beefiest of classes in just a few seconds, and learning to swap between shotgun and flamethrower will heighten your 1v1 potential. The reserve shooter is a personal favorite of mine, sacrificing two shells for a faster switch speed and the ability to tag blast jumping enemies who fly by. Most players don't even remember the pyro has a shotgun, expecting flares or WM1, so it's another way you can catch people off guard. The flare gun does 90 damage to burning targets and has to be reloaded. The shotgun does 90 damage to anyone nearby and can be fired six times, and it works on enemy pyros. The shotgun is better in all situations except the very specific ones which the flare guns are designed for. Stop calling it an underwhelming secondary, it's so good! Ah! And that's about it for Pyro 101. This class is so much fun to play and has the potential to be integral to your team's success. Besides, being the only female playable character in the game gives her some diversity points as well, and who doesn't love that? That's all. Like, subscribe, and get out. Video's over.